Hi everyone, um, thanks for joining us today and, and welcome along to um, our latest installment of, of the Lunchtime webinar today. It's um, our careers clinic um, and we're delighted to have um, Karen Lanigan join us to talk to us about career development and advancement. Um, for those of you who don't know Karen, um, she is the Head of Member Services at Chartered Ac Accountants Ireland um, and has over 25 years experience as an um, executive careers coach working with um, finance professionals um, at various different careers levels. Um, we do want to keep the, the session um, somewhat interactive, so um, we have allocated time to questions and answers at the end. Um, but feel free to um, throw questions into the chat box um, as we go along um, or otherwise into the Q&A box. Um, I believe if they go into the Q&A box, they're, they're private, um, whereas if they go into the chat box, um, everyone on the call should be able to see them. Um, so without further ado, um, I'm going to hand it over to Karen. Thanks a million, um, Greg, and I'm delighted to to be here with the um, the London Society um, for the careers webinar today. Um, as as Greg said, um, I've worked with the the institute for, for quite a number of, of years, um, specifically in the area of um, career support. And um, during that time, that's been I suppose a consistent element of my role. So what I can bring to you today is I suppose insights and you know um, ideas and and you know I suppose as I said insights in in terms of you know. The, the the background and the the career paths that other members have um followed what has worked what has you know really been beneficial to to them um and I know from looking at the um the the list of of members um you know, signed up for the webinar that you're coming from a very broad range of backgrounds industry sectors career levels as, as such whether ACA or FCA um, and what I'm going to talk about today is relevant irrespective of you know what career stage you're 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 at. It's it's a lot of this is kind of the the fundamentals, shall we shall we say, in terms of you know taking ownership and and um, managing your career. It doesn't matter whether you're in the 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 London market or whether you're in Dublin or New York or whatever. The the fundamentals still very much um hold true. Where some of the differences can come in then would be obviously you know kind of the market and and changes in the the market and and to some extent you know kind of things like you know CV format of CVs there there can be some some subtle differences there. But overall the fundamentals are are pretty much the the same. So what I want to do today is just as I said give you some advice and some input in, in terms of how you develop your career to future proof it going, going forward because there are a lot of changes taking place as we know right across the, the um, uh, I suppose the, the, the career landscape including for um, chartered accountants so it's, it's really to kind of give you some you know tools and um, ideas in terms of how you can better take control of your career and making sure that you know you are achieving the success that is, is right for you and, and you know that that you're making the most of the opportunities that that come along and that obviously includes you know your cv as we mentioned it also then um will touch on things like you know the the networking side of things i'm very conscious that you know um myself included i'm not a big fan of that that whole kind of networking terminology but it is all about just making contacts and having um, a support network of contacts around you that you can leverage, whether that's in terms of advice and guidance or whether it's in, in terms of, of referrals and, and recommendations if you're looking for a job. And also then aligned to that would be the whole area of your, your personal um, brand. The other area that I was asked to to touch on today is in relation to you know planning career moves and and maybe pivoting and looking at you know changing career path or or direction and how you might best do that. So I'll, I'll certainly touch on on that because um that 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 is something that that comes up and also then I'll give you some some um background and information in relation to the supports that you can access um via the um institute as as well. So the first thing I thought would be useful to touch on would be like the the changing role of um, a, a, a chartered accountant and we're, we're seeing this you know again right across the the globe the real the the driver I suppose of of this really is you know changes in 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 technology and you know the role of an accountant changing because 
you know, I suppose, the, of the impact of, of technology. So essentially what's happening is that accountants are moving up the value chain, shall we say, in, in terms of the, the role is now less, you know, transaction orientated and more focused on the, the kind of the transformation side of things and where it's very much more focused on adding value. So a lot of the, the transactional side of things is covered off by, um, you know, technology as, as we know, and where a chartered accountant can really come into their own then is, is that, I suppose, the interpretation, the analysis, the um, providing the insights in relation to the, the information. And then, you know, I suppose that's where those roles of like um, business partnering, the trusted advisor are all very much um, coming to the, the fore. And, you know, what, what I suppose the skill set that is required for those types of, of roles, um, you know, is, is definitely different to what it, um, I suppose the traditional skill set might have been um, previously. And I'll, I'll touch on that as we go through, just in terms of highlighting some of the the um, the skill sets that, you know, are very much in, in demand. And if you're looking at, you know, your own professional development, what, what you need to be looking at. So it is really all about, you know, that, as I said, the transformation, business partnering, adding value more into that kind of analytical piece. The other big thing is that it's not as much about the, the kind of the historical data. It's about, you know, the four forecasting projections and I'm sure lots of you are seeing this in 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 um your role um you know the 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 one of the big areas for example where um there's new roles and opportunities coming up is in say you know the area of sustainability um speaking with some members last week at at a confer at our conferrings and I was struck by the number of them that are already working in that sustainability space very much in kind of the advisory project related areas so it, it shows you that there's already kind of new opportunities um coming up there so there's definitely scope and potential and opportunity for chartered accountants to, to get more involved in businesses help them to adapt to you know new practices new way of doing things new areas Areas of 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 focus and you know help them to to um, obviously ultimately achieve their goals, but also at the same time it's um, I suppose aligned to your career potential and the opportunities that um, are, are are there for you too. So like just generally speaking, like the the type of roles that like we're we're seeing coming up, just like generally speaking, you know we're we're seeing a lot of members are are focusing on kind of board roles and and opportunities, whether that's in a you know, a, a paid capacity or or pro bono. So um, what often what members might do is they might start in a pro bono um, non-executive directorship role, build up their, their experience and then leverage that then to take on, you know, paid assignments or paid roles at, at a later stage. We're seeing the role of, of FC, FD, CFO, very much central to all organizations but like that that role and focus is is changing with much more emphasis on the the technology side of things the commercial side and then those other um, newer areas, newer emerging areas such as sustainability coming through. I've touched on the business partnering side of things. That's very much aligned then with the financial planning and analysis and all again, this is um, all enabled um, by technology data. Project management, big big area of, of, of growth and opportunity. So whether that's in its own right as a pure project management role or where as part of, you know, I suppose, your overall role that you're involved in specific projects. And I will touch on that again, because that is very much a, a skill set that, you know, can help to pr propel your career and, and position you very well. Um, and that exposure that you get on, on projects can really help in, in terms of, of career um, development. So as I mentioned, sustainability, environmental um, projects and areas, and also any anything within that whole diversity and inclusion space as, as well is, is definitely very much at, at the, the forefront. And what we're seeing is that there are new roles coming up all of the time. And like there's roles that will exist in three or five years time that we have no idea, you know, what that they're, they're coming down the, the track. So it's a case of just staying on top of the developments and what's happening in the, the marketplace because, you know, the, the, the speed of change has definitely accelerated. And with that, then new opportunities and, and new new roles um, are, 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 are coming up that, you know, will we'll present um, opportunities.
So really, the, the, like I suppose, as I said, it is all about, you know, that piece in, in terms of adding value, looking for those those kind of opportunities. And then, you know, you don't need to be the technology guru here, but you do need to have a good understanding of how technology can enable you in your role or where it can add value within the organization. And I think if you're you're constantly looking through that kind of lens of, of adding value, um, then I, I think like that will, will help to kind of prepare your, your um, propel your career. So I like this quote from Albert Einstein, where he where he talks about striving not to be a success, but rather to to be of value. And I think if you will, if you focus on that and say, right, well, look, how can I add value within my role? Success will automatically follow because you will be recognised for what it is you're you're bringing to the the um the 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 the, the table, and that will help in terms of your your career development. So as um, Greg said, just to kind of reiterate, if there are any questions, we can take those either at the end or um, if I if I have a moment throughout, I'll, I'll certainly take them as as we go. So one key tip for you to today um, is that, you know, continuous learning really is essential. Like none of us ever get to a stage now where we can kind of say, look, I'm done and dusted, never want to do another course again, never want to do another exam or never want to open another book again. That just it, like if you want to move your career forward, you do need to be prepared to look and see, look, where there's a, where are there opportunities for me to add new skills? Because the, the skills that we all have are becoming obsolete more quickly than they would have done before. So it really is important that if you are going to stay relevant and stay on top of your game, that you look at, at you know, where those where you need to, to build on those skills. And what you'll notice, and many of you probably will have noticed this already, as you move along through your career and you're taking on more senior level roles the, the the technical piece isn't as important um you know it's it's more about the soft skills the leadership skills that are often referred to like so communication you know that the um strategic thinking those kind of skills that become a lot more important so that's where the the emphasis um tends to to, to be or where you know you should have that that emphasis and as i mentioned to you earlier just understanding and having that it savvy look you don't need to be able to program or anything but just to understand and how systems can bring benefits to an organization, I, I think, is, is important. Um, the great thing about the, the, the virtual world that we're in now is that courses are, most courses are um, being facilitated online. So it's not as much of a hassle to kind of go out in, into the city or wherever, you know, in uh, of, of a cold winter evening, you can you can log on online or learn at your own pace, you know, kind of at, at, a, at, at a time that suits you. So it's absolutely perfect in terms of, you know, making use of those those cold winter evenings at home. So it's definitely something to to, to think about. What I would always say to members is is like not to just do a, a course just for the sake of it, you know, think carefully about it because it is an investment of your time, your energy, you all have busy jobs. So the last thing you want to do is to kind of layer on an extra, an extra, you know, commitment um, that really isn't going to benefit you. So you need to have a look and see, well, look, you know, how can I either play to my strengths and develop a skill set that I already have and bring it up to the next level? Or where are the gaps for me? And you know, be strategic in in terms of um, you know the 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 learning that you focus on. And importantly as well, it has to be something that you enjoy. Because again, if you're going to be logging in, you know, at, at um, in the evenings or at, at weekends, if you're not enjoying it, like it is, it really it is. It, it does become a burden. So it is really about being very selective and discerning in terms of of um the, the your your choices. And the great thing is in the current environment where we where we have this global talent shortage employers are a lot more um keen to to support learning and development so you know don't be afraid to ask for for for, for support and i think the the better prepared you are going in for that ask the more likely you are to to get it so some of the tips i've given you there should actually help in in terms of of positioning it with your employer so the skills that we're seeing that are, are in demand, and this is on a, on a global level, is communication skills. And we saw that during the, 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 the pandemic is, is like, you know, how you communicated with your, your team, both kind of face to face and, you know, remotely or virtually, really very important analytical and critical thinking critical thinking is 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 a phrase that i'm i'm hearing a lot of and seeing a lot of in in terms of um you know focus on the the leadership side of things data analysis and in interpretation um again you know really a hot commodity 
digital literacy, as I mentioned um, already, that commercial savviness and being able to, I suppose, um, connect the numbers with what's actually happening in the business and telling the, the story behind the numbers, really very, very important. Um, and then the whole kind of project change management space as well. A lot of organizations going through a lot of change at the moment. So if you're somebody that can come in, take control of that, manage the projects and the change management element around that, then again, it's a, it's a skill set that's very much um, in demand. Similarly, that agility. And again, we all had to demonstrate that that during um, COVID and, and being flexible. And then the, the whole innovation, creativity, curiosity, really very important. Um, and you probably noticed I left out emotional intelligence there. And I did that kind of deliver deliberately because a lot like emotional intelligence kind of underpins a lot of this like in, in terms of how you behave in your your role how you react to certain um scenarios and situations and having the awareness to be able to adapt to certain situations and 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 to do so in a, a professional way and it's really important that you have that kind of i suppose level of awareness both in terms of the people around you but also that that self-awareness so again that would come in under those kind of soft skills that i, I mentioned earlier so definitely one to to think about so in terms of setting personal goals, so just to, to recap, you know, I'd be looking at, you know, kind of the options that are out there to improve your, your skills. You know, the online world does present an opportunity now, it makes those courses ex more accessible, including kind of the on the, the international stage as, as well. Choose wisely and look at a course that aligns with your career ambitions. Um, and then, you know, making sure that it is a good investment of your time, your energy, and and obviously the 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 financial side of it if if you're you're paying for it your, yourself, obviously, as well. So they're the, the key kind of takeaways from that. The other thing is like developing your skills isn't all about courses. Um, and courses are not for everybody and like courses are great, but they only kind of teach you a, a certain amount. There's, there, um, I, I suppose like there's a lot to be said for actually gaining that that hands on experience. So it is about looking to see how you can get that additional, um, I suppose, experience, that hands on experience and, and learning. So whether that's through like a lateral career move, because sometimes we, we do obsess and kind of think I have to keep moving up the ladder and up the ladder and up the ladder. But sometimes actually taking a lateral move or a sideways move that facilitates you building on your skill set and gaining additional knowledge will actually help you to propel your career forward you know, more quickly, ultimately, because you have the additional skills and experience that are required. So it's definitely worth thinking about that. And I'll touch on that um, in a little bit more detail shortly as well. Also, you know, looking at contract roles that can certainly help volunteering for projects. So it's kind of putting up your hand, um, you know, internally to kind of say, look, I'd like to get involved in the project. Um, and, and that can be really um, useful getting involved in um, activities outside of work. So for example, getting involved in, you know, a board or sitting on a board of, on a voluntary capacity, volunteering in other organizations. Again, all ways to develop your skills and your, your, your confidence. So definitely worth thinking about. And then looking to see, you know, is there a coach or a mentor who can work, who you can work with that can help you, it, particularly in those areas of emotional intelligence, self-awareness, can be really useful or if there's a mentor either in work or outside of work that can help you in terms of your your career development again all really um useful options and all part of ways in which you can develop yourself um, professionally we do have a career mentor program here through the institute um it's a virtual program so um if if any um any of you are interested in that maybe touch base with me afterwards and i can take you through that um but definitely a mentor can can that can be a, a really really useful resource in terms of moving your um career forward and the other option to consider is maybe getting involved in the the institute as well for example with the london society that can be a great way to kind of build out your network build your confidence you know maybe get more more confident in terms of you know public speaking or working as as part of a team or as part of a, a committee or even just you know getting more exposure to you know other um like-minded um, professionals so it's not all about courses. There are other ways to to develop your skills so that you have the skill set required to um, to move your your career forward. So I mentioned earlier about taking control of your your career, and ultimately, 
it is it is your responsibility. There are very few employers nowadays that will you know take full control. Um, so and ultimately you don't want to be you know t- um, I suppose kind of railroaded down a, a particular track. You want to be making the decisions that are right for you, um, and that you're the one in in the the driving seat. So it is really important that you give yourself some time and set aside time to plan your career. Typically, if I run a poll um, and ask members on a webinar like this, how many members have a career plan? And typically only 10 percent have a career plan. And I've no doubt that if I ask that question here today, that it will probably be the the, the same answer. So if you did nothing else um, after the um, webinar today, other than to set some side time aside for yourself over the next couple of weeks to really just kind of take time out to think about what it is you're looking for from your career, then like my, I, I will have done a, a good job here in, in terms of, you know, getting you to, to, to think differently. Um, like again, a lot of people spend more time planning their, their holidays than they do um, their career. So, you know, um, if you think about like our, our careers, for some people are, are getting longer. They are definitely more complex because the, the chances of you staying with the same organization like maybe our parents or grandparents did, you know, doesn't really happen anymore. There are a number of different kind of pivots and changes. So we do need to be more in more control of that. And the greater clarity you have in terms of where you want to, to go um, in terms of your career, the, the better. And it really is just, I suppose, being very... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? It's it's being being very much kind of deliberate about this and setting aside time. So even if you took an hour every month and just you know to to put aside that quiet time just to revisit your your thinking around it or once a quarter just to kind of um, look at it, break it down into steps, be clear on what it is that you're looking for. That it it is genuinely the, the one of the best investments you can you can make in in your your career. So the kind of things then that like you need to be thinking about, and this is is different different like as I'm, I'm kind of a little bit reticent nearly to make the list but it's just kind of give you some food for thought because success looks different for different people and also then as well success will look different for you depending on your the the the, the phase of your career that that you're at so for some of us working parents there might be a, a phase like when the kids are, are um, a little bit younger that you kind of go do you know what like I'm, I'm happy doing a really good job here now but I'm I, I don't really want to be at that stage where you know, I'm, I'm taking on more responsibility. But then as the kids get older, for example, you might decide, well, actually now, do you know what? I'm I'm happy to take on more. I want to drive things forward again. So it is very much going to be a, a personal thing for, for you. So some of the things to to look at would be kind of work-life balance. And that that's one that's very much come to the fore more so now since the um, the, the pandemic. And lo- likewise, flexibility too, because I think we're, we're all more focused on, on that. Job satisfaction, again, one that is is more in focus um, and there's a, a greater um, emphasis on the, the whole area of a sense of purpose. Um, and that's one of the key things I'm seeing from conversations with members is that, you know, I, I want to roll or I want to work for an organization where I have a sense of purpose. I have a sense of connection with the val- like the values of the, the organization. And that's where I suppose um I suppose the areas like sustainability are important, you know, that that, you know, a lot of people are really keen on 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 that particular area. So again, then to kind of look at, you know, the level of challenge you want, you know, kind of progression, what is it that you want? And then things like, you know, salary package, job title can be another one as, as well. For some people that's important, others it's 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 not. So again, just food some food for thought, but by no means is it um, you know, a, a, a um it, it, it like a, a never ending list as such. It's it's one just for you to, to to think about and ultimately it's 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 up to you to yourself. The other thing then, and I thought this was worth just focusing in on is um just further considerations in the the hybrid wor- um world of work for us and and you know thinking about out what works best for for you in terms of that balance between working from home and working from um, the office. Thinking about look, you know, where where do you feel most motivated? Where do you do your your best? best work because I know some people have said you know oh it's, it's very noisy being back in the office it's causing me lots of distractions so there's certain elements of my 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 job that I'm better off doing at home so it's really just thinking about that in terms of the impact on your performance 
and your 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 motivation and then you know depending on the type of role you know where is it where where does it make more sense for you to to be at home or in the office and then obviously there are going to be other considerations in terms of outside of of work um commitments as well so it's really just looking at this in the round as to what works best for you and to factor that in in terms of your your next steps um career wise so like i i suppose I often get asked about, can you give me a structure, Karen, for for a career plan? And yes, I can. But what I would say to you is like, you know, I suppose you're all used to to probably doing business plans or putting together spreadsheets, etc. So it's really it's up to you in terms of developing a format that works best for you. And you, you probably, you know, I, I suppose evolve it as 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 you, you kind of develop out the, the plan. But just to give you a, a broad kind of structure, um, I'm happy to do that. The other key thing here is you need to to be agile and flexible in this like that you know because things change your roles will change there's curveballs that could come come from nowhere that you need to, to kind of adapt and and adjust quickly so it's, it's just to remember that none of this is kind of cast in stone you do need to look at it through the, the kind of lens of of um flexibility so what i would suggest is breaking any career plan down into kind of short medium and long-term term goals and, and particularly in in the current environment you know there was a time when it was quite like it was easy easier to kind of plan three, five, you know, years down the, the the line, it is more difficult now. And you'll probably all have seen that in terms of business planning that the the, the time frames have, have become shorter. It's fairly similar as well now in terms of, of cran- planning your career. But this this framework should should broadly still work. What you need to ask yourself for each of those time frames are like what are my goals and objectives? during that time frame what support do i need to achieve those goals so never think that you're on your own here and this is where the coach the mentor the institute your boss your family your friends your network they're all there to support you so you should be leaning on them and leveraging you know the the collective experience and insights that those people have and then to try and make this real for yourself is how will i measure my success so like one of your goals could be you know to and to be promoted in 12 months time. So what will the measure of that be like? So what would the role be? What what would your salary increase likely to, to be? What would the role look like for you? So it's just going to put some tangible kind of element around that and, and measure of, of success is, is always um, important. I mentioned to you earlier that um, I suppose career paths aren't as 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 straightforward now as they they used to be, um, and we always kind of spoke about the career ladder, and I'm sure that's a term that you're all very familiar with, and and climbing that ladder, and one step leads to another, leads to another. But um, I suppose that that the some of the thinking around that has has changed now to more of what they're calling a lattice um, career, and that you know um, I suppose what's happening now is that. W- People are tending to change career, maybe or change jobs a little bit more regularly than they might have done before. So what you're doing then is maybe making more kind of sideways moves to kind of build up that experience, as I said earlier, um, and and um, you know, kind of building more experience and skills around you as you move move forward. So it, it's a bit like I would um I don't know if um any of you've gone on those those climbing walls, you know, where you know the the step like the to get to the top isn't a straight route from from here to there you sometimes like well actually all of the time you kind of step across and reach out to another like a um, handle to hold on to kind of lift yourself up and this is a bit like that that this concept is a bit like that is where you're stepping to one side building on a, an additional skill set or area of knowledge to then kind of move forward now you ultimately end up in the same place but you may have gone off a couple of different routes to get experience and connections um, and skills to, to ultimately get to the same place. So it's just a different way of thinking it that the 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 way to the top isn't always necessarily one straight um you know I suppose ladder to the 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 top. So it's just something to think about about staying agile, being adaptable and, and flexible, particularly in the you know the, the current environment and never you know, say no to a, a new opportunity without actually kind of thinking it through. Because I've seen so many scenarios where a member may have come to me and say, Karen, I've been offered this job, but do you know what? Really, I, I don't think I can do it. Or I, I don't feel ju- ready for it just yet. Or I don't have the skills and the, the experience. But when we actually sit down and talk it through, 
they do actually have like say 90 to 95 percent of of what they need and in those instances where they've taken that leap of faith and gone with it they have been successful so a lot of this is about knowing that look you're not always going to have absolutely everything that is needed for that next step up you're not always going to necessarily be fully ready for that move but sometimes if they those opportunities come up you just need to to go with it and to be brave um and sometimes just kind of step outside of the um the the comfort um your your comfort zone as such and and just um take that that on and richard branson has a great phrase that I, I love um, where he says, if somebody offers you the, a, like a, an amazing opportunity, but you're not sure that you can do it, just say yes and figure it out afterwards. And there's always going to be an element of that that you have to figure it out on the job, particularly at the moment, because very few roles are you know, I, I suppose just straightforward. There's always going to be elements now of, of, of you know, change and things moving within a, an organisation. So you just need to be flexible and, and adaptable. So I think if you go in with that, you know, I suppose open mindset and growth mindset into these things, you're going to open up a lot more opportunities for your, yourself as, as you go um, through your, your career. So I'm going to touch now on planning career moves and, and pivots, including those kind of lateral moves and, and contracting. So again, just to, to kind of keep an open mind in relation to the, these areas. And this was a, um, an, a, a like topic that was suggested because there, there have been a, a number of members who have asked, you know, um, well, look, how do I, I go about this? Um, so one of the, the key things is really to consider, and this isn't just in terms of, you know, kind of career moves or pivots. It's in general, it's kind of knowing what your, your core strength are and just kind of saying to yourself look I know I'm good at x y and z this is the feedback that I've received regularly I know because I I have you know achieved x y and z that these are the the skills that I I have so you know it's really kind of being very aware of that and it, it might sound pretty basic but I know and like I'm surprised at this each time, but I've spoken to, you know, members who are CFOs, CEOs, and I've asked them, well, look, what do you think your core skills are, your core strengths? And very often they struggle. So don't worry if you feel that, look, God, I really don't know what they are or I'd struggle. You know, I think um, spend some time really thinking about this. Um, and I, I have a little tool that I show you in a moment as to, to how you do that. But it's all about making a list in, in of, of those kind of core skills um, and being very much um, aware of those. And then just making sure that, you know, you're comfortable explaining those or outlining those to um to uh, I suppose the the decision makers and and um, influencers within um, your your organisation and you will find as well if you're in a position or a, a role where you're playing to your strengths and you're using those skills all of the time you're going to do a much better job but also as as well like it's going to give you so much more satisfaction um and in in terms of of you know I suppose the role that that you're doing so to help you highlight and identify what those those um core skills are, what you need to do is think about some of your core accomplishments or your core achievements and then ask yourself, well, what skills did I need to have and to demonstrate to actually accomplish what I did? So it could be something if you start back right at the very beginning of your career and you say to yourself, OK, so I qualified as a chartered accountant and we all know that that is a milestone. It's a real achievement. It takes blood, sweat and, and tears. Um, so you kind of say to yourself, well, what is it like skill wise that I need to have? I needed to have to qualify. So it's, you know, because focus, it's determination and um, it is like numeric ability typically. So there's a whole range of, of skills. Um, so you, you document those. You do the same then. So you might say, right, well, when I was um, I, my, my next accomplishment then was being promoted to manager. So you're kind of saying, right, so what did I need to demonstrate skills wise to, um, you know, to 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 be promoted or you might have managed a, a project um, successfully through to completion within budget and achieved all of the, the KPIs. What skills do I need there? So very quickly, you will start to see that there's a pattern or a trend in terms of those core skills that you have demonstrated in each of your roles or each time you've done well. And that will help you to build up that 
um, I often kind of re refer to it as like your your parachute um, or your your backpack of of skills. Because if you did need to leave your role to go to another one, you have this backpack of skills that you can bring with you that'll facilitate um, a career move going forward. So again, really important that you know you can articulate the, these because. It, you, it'll help you in terms of your CV. It'll help you in an interview scenario. It'll help you with that elevator pitch. If you meet somebody and you're 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 trying to kind of set out your your stall or introduce yourself, really important. So again, worth spending a bit of time on. Um, you know, I suppose kind of um, documenting that and being very clear. Um, so if you are making a a, a change, um, you know, I think that the key things here is, you know, if you can take your time around it think it through. So what I was saying to you earlier, it's just to kind of have a look at it and say, well, what is it I'm looking to achieve? And often it can seem quite overwhelming, particularly if you're looking to, to change from one particular area or discipline or sector into a, another. So it's, it's breaking down those those kind of steps into smaller steps a, a, along the, the, um, the, the, the way and look at the skills that you have and what are the transferable skills that you have that irrespective of whether you're in, you know, let's say the financial services sector or the pharmaceutical sector, that you can bring those, those with you. So you're looking at those kind of transferable skills or the generic skills that you can bring with you. And then you're making sure that in, in the, the CV that you're preparing, the LinkedIn profile you have, the conversations you're having, that you're speaking about the kind of the generic skills and the generic experience that you have that you can bring to the role and that you're you're kind of almost stripping out the um like the the sector specific experience as such or terminology um often is the, the case and then kind of map out that that plan. Now what you might find is if you're trying to I suppose to change discipline and sector both at the same time, it can be quite difficult. So if you were trying to move, say, for example, from internal audit within financial services out into a financial accounting role in industry, that can be quite difficult um, because you're changing sector and you're changing discipline. So often you need to kind of take it in steps and break it down into steps and move one at a time. So you might go from, say, you know, um, internal audit within financial services into internal audit within industry as your first step and then build up that experience within industry and then move discipline. So you might then go from an internal audit role um, in industry into a more general finance role within, within um, industry. So it's just kind of break it down the other way to think about this is like to look at contract roles because you can often find that when um companies are, are hiring for contract roles that they're a little bit more flexible in terms of what they look for so it can be easier to kind of get a foot in the door um, and and build on that that experience from there so take it as a, a stepping stone or a stop gap then that facilitates that that pivot on into um an, another another role so the I mentioned earlier about kind of the, the lattice moves and there's our, our, our climbing wall for, for anybody who couldn't visualize it. But it really is just thinking about, you know, what you can get from those those lateral moves. And often it is it's building on your your experience. It's building on um, your your knowledge. It's building on your your confidence and your exposure. Um, generally, it's also often builds on your your network and your your connections, and it helps just to kind of enhance your visibility. So those moves can either be within, the, I suppose, your current organization or external. So it's really just looking at, at you know, I, I suppose the, those opportunities and very often like it, it can lead to you finding or, or discovering a whole different kind of career path than maybe you had mapped out. Um, and that can often be the, the case. I've seen that on quite a number of occasions where, you know, a lateral move has, has brought a, a member down a, a very different career path than they, they might have thought of initially, but it works out really very well for them. So I would encourage you to think about, you know, kind of lateral moves that it doesn't always necessarily need to be that kind of step up. Um, but if it if it if it gives you the experience and the exposure that will position you more strongly the next time for the next move, it, it can be really, really very, very worthwhile. So just to to recap then on the, the benefits of, of contracting, you know, contracting, I suppose, can, as I said, often be an easier way into a new sector. So it gives you an opportunity to kind of build up that that experience 
build out your your network the other thing as well is like you know um it can show an employer that you're very um adaptable and flexible um and you know the other thing is if you go in on a contract basis and then you're made permanent you kind of know what you're getting yourself into as as well you know you like the role you know you like the organization importantly you know you like the people around you as, as well so it can be a good way for on on both the employer side and your own side to road test a, a, a position so you know that's definitely um something to to, to bear in in mind so just touching on um, CV trends and making the most of your um, CV. Um, and look, I would always say to people, even if you're not actively looking for a role, it's no harm to keep your CV up to date because what you'll find is that if you haven't done a CV for quite a number of years and then all of a sudden you need to pull one together because the job comes up that you're really interested in, you really struggle to kind of remember, you know, um, uh, I suppose elements of your experience from years ago and you kind of think oh sure look I'll remember you'd be surprised that that you will really struggle to kind of pull it together so you know it's it's something that you should do even once a year just like put it put a note in the diary say right January is my month to update my CV to make sure it reflects what happened over the, the last 12 months and particularly in terms of achievements we often forget those and um, so it's, it's good just even to keep a separate note of what those achievements were what the, the kind of the milestones were in that respect, what the outcomes were. Um, and again, you're building up a, a bank of um, knowledge around not only your skills, but also you'll have some examples if you're going into an interview and, and in, a, in a competency based interview where you're being asked to give um, some some examples. So the, the key things, a lot of this you, you probably know already, so I'll, I'll, I'll kind of just touch on it very briefly. Really, um, with the CV, less is more. I suppose nowadays, like there was a time when CVs were three, four, five pages, two to three pages at most, because um, most most employers and HR professionals are taking roughly about 30 minutes or 30 seconds, should I say, to, to go through a, a CV. The emphasis should be, and, and like particularly the more senior you get, it's less about the kind of functions and responsibilities and more about your achievements and how you've added value within your, your, your role. So it's less about, you know, the preparation of financial accounts and more about, well, look, manage X, Y and Z project that delivers whatever it might be. So it's really just kind of zoning in on that and a, and a lot more emphasis on the competencies and, and specific skills that you're bringing to, um, to a, a role. So as I said, keep it short. The other thing is a lot of CVs now will have a, um, a profile paragraph at the very beginning. So you'll have your name and, and personal details and then a, a profile paragraph. So that's usually three, four lines just as a general introduction to you as, as a, a professional highlighting some of the key skills that, that you bring to a role. And that is often the same kind of paragraph or same style as the, the, the paragraph that you'll have in, in LinkedIn. And it's making sure that like your LinkedIn profile and, and CV align that you know you're, you're saying the the, the 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 same thing really um the other thing you will need to do is to kind of tailor your cv to each particular role that you're applying for because each role will have slightly different requirements or nuances so you just want to make sure that you're doing that and that could include putting in like some key words that you know, put come up in the job spec that are reflected in your your CV, and a lot of organisations now use um algorithms um and systems to shortlist um CVs for our candidates for interviews. So it's important that you have those keywords in there. The other thing I would say to you is like to help bring those achievements um, and responsibilities um, to, to life. Try and have some metrics in there that kind of reflect what you've brought to the role. So whether that's kind of profitability, you know, savings, et cetera, just to, to highlight um, those in there. And it's really just I suppose, trying to kind of make your skills and experience stand out from, from others. So think about what it is that kind of sets you apart. So it mightn't be one particular thing on its own. It might be a combination of things. So it's kind of bring those to, to, to life in the um, the CV so that it it does um, stand out. So moving on then to developing your 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 personal brand, um, and this is I suppose a little bit more challenging in a hybrid um, environment because you know there's this whole concept of proximity bias that if you're not in the office as much, you can be forgotten. So it is just making sure that you're you're aware of of that. I'm not saying like you need to be going into the office every day if you're not now currently, but it's just making sure that when you are going in, that you're making the most of the the time that you're you're in there. 
and that you're very much kind of, um, I suppose, focused on making sure that intentionally and proactively you're managing your, your visibility. Um, and even on online calls as well, it's like a simple thing, like making sure your camera's on during um, a, a meeting, making sure that your your contributions are, are impactful because from a career perspective, you know, that visibility and profile is really very important. And I, I do think um, that's something that we're going to need to watch really carefully in, in terms of hybrid working now, particularly when you're at an earlier stage of your career that, you know, you are intentionally managing that that um, that visibility. And I, this um, PI model is 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 a model that was, um, I suppose, developed quite a number of years ago. And it's, it's I suppose, the, 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 the key message from this is, I see Greg smiling there, is that, you know the the key air um I, I suppose ingredient for career success they're suggesting is the exposure that you get so 60 percent is down to your exposure within your your role and career in general the other 30 percent is is your image and how you present and the impact that you make and then just 10 percent is 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 performance now um like I, i'm sure we've all seen scenarios where where it's those who are are more visible and and um you know are, are better promoting themselves that that may get ahead more so so it is just something to to bear in mind i'm not saying that you don't need to do a good job yes you do but you also do need to factor in the importance of exposure and image and looking at opportunities and ways for you to showcase the the um the 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 good work that you're doing and um, make yourself more visible don't be afraid to kind of blow your own trumpet i know it can be cringy and none of us like it but it's using you know opportunities like your um annual appraisal meetings um etc just any opportunity you can to you know to to kind of um outline and and um i suppose to spotlight the good work that you're doing really really important and this again I, I suppose just kind of emphasizes it in terms of the the um the, the key um decision makers again just as i said earlier making the most of the the time that you're you're in the office and this is i think something that people have struggled with myself included in terms of managing your 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 day or managing your week and then trying to kind of balance between hybrid meetings and face to face meetings i know i've i've messed up on a, on a few occasions and um in in terms of managing my my diary but it's just think strategically about it to kind of say right there's no point for example going into the office and then ending up on teams meetings all day because you could have done that at home whereas if you're in the office and you're saying right i need to to meet the the people that I need to see and meet them face to face and that you plan your 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 day that way like so for example I knew, know last week I need to speak to somebody about getting a, a decision they're dreadful in terms of responding via email so I knew that wasn't going to, to work so it was a case of um pardon the expression doorstepping them at their desk to kind of say look I sent you this email you haven't got a decision let's talk about it now and I walked away with a decision so it's really being very strategic in terms of who do I need to speak to and when I'm in the office who do I need to, to make sure that I'm speaking with how can I make the most of that 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 time how can I you know build on my network while I'm there how can I arrange those those coffees with people that I need to to, to sit down with and being very um again deliberate and proactive active in relation to that and um i think it's we're all learning i, I think to, to be honest still locked you know but I, I think if you're um you know very keen to move your career forward you do need to be making the most of the the, the time in in the office i'm not saying you need to be there every day but again it's it's just being strategic um around that and making the most of the the water cooler um moments so I'm just conscious of time. So I'm going to um, just touch um, quickly on developing and leveraging your, your network or, as I say, investing in your, your connections. So, again, you know, this and this touches, touches on the piece I was saying about um, you know, working on 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 uh, making the most of the time in the, the office. So, again, when it comes to building your connections, you know, having a plan around that um, is is important, and it, it's often referred to as your personal boardroom. And thinking about it and saying, right, who do I have within my network that you know I I can call upon for 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 different levels of support? So if it was a a technical query, who would I go to? Um, if it was like a a people management query, I would I have or I needed support in relation to that, who would I go to? If it was a career decision, I was looking to to um to get support 
support and who would I go to? So you're kind of mapping that out to kind of say, right, who's in my support network that I can rely on? If I was looking for a job or an introduction, who would I go to? So it's making sure that you have that broad representation um, in your, your network. I'm a big believer in quality over quantity. Um, because again, you could have say 5,000 connections on, on LinkedIn, but realistically, how many of those are you going to know really very well? You're better off with 50 and a strong network of 50 than 500. So I would say quality over quantity and build it up slowly, but try and have a bit of diversity in there so that it's not all chartered accountants that, for example, that you have maybe some some um, connections within HR, you might have others elsewhere. So it's just investing that time to build out your, your network and using LinkedIn where, where you can as, as well, because it can be a great way to um, to connect with and reach out to people. So, for example, if you've met somebody at um, an institute event, you might send them a message afterwards on LinkedIn to say it was great meeting you last night um, at the Tapas evening and great to have a chat. I would love to connect with you now and on, on LinkedIn um, and like nine times out of 10, they, they will accept. So, again, good way of building that those connections and and keeping in touch you can also like share content on on linkedin and some people kind of go oh, I'm a bit scared of doing that you don't have to develop the content your, yourself share something else that somebody else has posted so if denise posts something for example um activities of the the london society you might decide to share that as as well and just kind of build up your confidence and build your your profile again on on linkedin so there's lots of ways of doing that but it's a case of just starting small and building up your 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 confidence um, around that. So in terms of your your brand, then um like a, a lot of people when they talk about brand, they they kind of think of it and uh, like I suppose in the sense of like what what is it that people are saying about you when you leave the room is often the way that it's it's described. So it's about that impact that um you know you you have or it's often described as kind of like if you were to pick up a glass and you leave an imprint like of your fingers on it that is kind of what your brand is as well so you really need to think very carefully about what it is you're you're saying to people and that's um but like and this comes back to some of what we talked about earlier which is around exposure and um, and you know your your image is thinking about like you know the Firstly, yes, the first impressions, but it's also in, in terms of, you know, how you communicate with, with people, whether that's for like, you know, um, in person or, or online. Um, and it's also about, you know, your, your attitude and your, your approach, you know, are you a solutions driven person or, or not? Or are you the person that kind of goes, oh no, not this again or whatever, you know? So it's all about thinking about how you show up and the, the impact you make. It's also thinking about, and I touched on this earlier in terms of your differentiators, what makes you, you different to others? So it's, it's just thinking about, and that can often relate back to the skills that you have. So it could be, you know, a skill that you have or a unique combination of skills that helps you to, to, to kind of stand out. So it's really just thinking about this in the round in, in terms of um, your, your own personal brand and, you know, whether that is facilitating your career development or holding you back, and that's the the big question, and what you can do to kind of build your your your, your personal brand. So just to give you an overview of some of the career supports that you have available free of charge as a member. So we have a, a team here who provide career coaching and advice and um, that includes CV and interview preparation. We have um, a recruitment service which does um, provide um, opportunities in, in London from time to, to time as well and further afield. There's a competency map online which is called the career pathway. So if you're just looking for some inspiration around the, the type of, of um, skills that you, you you should be focusing in on. There's a map there that will help you depending on the, the career stage that you're at. And I also mentioned then the career mentor program. So if anybody's interested in finding a mentor through the Institute, we can help you with that as well. And then there's a whole range of other recorded career webinars and online tools um, available as, as, as well. So um, it's over to you now um, with any questions. I'm just going to have a look here. I see some, some um, and 
in some questions here, um, just checking here. So the question then, one of them is around, actually, uh, Greg, you were going to go through these. Will I hand over to you or? I think maybe in the interest of time, Karen, if you just want to fly through them. That, that would yeah, work so well. in what, um, one of the questions here was in relation to non-executive director roles um, that they sound like a, um, a good stepping stone. And absolutely, they are a good stepping stone. And how the question was, how does the Institute support members who want to get involved? So firstly, um, we do provide um, CPD courses in this space. Um, so for anybody who feels that, look, they, they need some um, additional training, both for, uh, like from a, a governance perspective in, um, in, in general, and then also through our recruitment service, we do um, have um, organizations who contact us specifically looking for um, members to, to join the board of um, various different organizations. So happy to, um, to, to, to speak speak to, to any of you actually in, in relation to that. And then I suppose the other way to go about this is to contact um, charities and not-for-profit organisations because again, they're very um, often very happy to add charged accountants to their, their their board and it can be a great way just to kind of build that experience. So, and often your, through your own network can be a really good way of securing those, those roles as, as well. Okay, so the next question then is, have you any tips stroke guidance to guide for when a prospective employer who you don't know as intimate, sorry, as intimately gives you the opportunity to, to shape the role um, they are looking to fill. So in other words, like, you know, what would you do in that case? So what I would suggest um, in that case is, um, I suppose, a couple of things. You need to understand, you know, I suppose what the um, organization is is looking for, you know, so what their expectations in terms of the role are, where the role will fit in in terms of the over, overall kind of structure of the, the, the team and the organization. You also then need to kind of understand what their their future plans for the, the organization are as, as well. So you're, you're thinking about that and then as well, you need to think about, well, look, what can you bring to the role by way of skills and experience? How can you use the, that, those skills and experience um, to, to, to add value, as I was talking about earlier? And what is it you want from your career? Um, and how can you build that into the job spec as well? So to me, it sounds like a fantastic opportunity where, you know, you get to, uh, I suppose, kind of shape the role to meet the needs and the expectations of the organization, but also as well to kind of build it in around what you're looking to get from your career. And, you know, I suppose to kind of focus on the areas that, you know, I suppose you want to work in and that you enjoy as, as well. But certainly if I haven't answered the, the question um, as comprehensively as you might like, um, reach out to me um, personally you can, through the careers at um, email address and I'm more than happy to to have a, a detailed conversation but it sounds like a great opportunity and and one doesn't that doesn't come up as 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 often as as you might think or as as you might like so hopefully I've provided some food for for for, for thought and look if anybody has any other questions more than happy to to take those offline as as well Greg yeah, thanks very much, Karen. Like you say, so much food for thought there. And um, mm -hmm. I, I was certainly most fascinated by that pie chart, um, yes. for, for sure. Mm. Um, just quickly, um, thanks again for joining us. We really, really no appreciate problem. you making time for us today. Um, and yeah, it was a really valuable session. Um, for everyone else, just a quick reminder um, of two events coming up. Um, Sean Doyle is joining us. He's chairman of BA and it's chairman and CEO of BA. Um, and formerly Erlingus, he's joining us um, on the 15th of November in Deloitte. Um, registrations are opened now and filling fast. So um, be sure to book your place to that. Um, and then our annual Christmas dinner is back on Thursday, the 1st of December. Um, bookings going live tomorrow and um, early board tips early bird tickets available until 31st of October and um, so again be sure to to book your place to that and um, otherwise all that remains to be said is thanks to everyone for joining and and once again to Karen and also to Denise for for organizing uh, uh, no problem at all it was a, a pleasure to join and um, hope, hopefully everybody got, took something from it at least anyway brilliant thanks a million thanks a million Bye -bye. take care thank you